Okay, so it's three weeks into 2022, and I, f I feel like a lot of you can agree with me when I say I'm so far behind on what's trending right now. I mean, uh, one moment we're throwing cheese at babies' heads, and Charlie D'Amelio's over here doing the renegade. Can anyone tell me how the Friends reunion went? Oh, wait, I saw that. See, um, so much is going on, I don't even remember what I've seen and what I haven't looked at. Like, that's insane. And, uh,. Especially with uh, Disney's uh, recent movie, Encanto. Like, that's all over the place online. And the soundtrack is so catchy, you just like can't get any work done because it's stuck in your head. And, you know, there's going to be that day that you finally just give in and watch the movie to get out of your system. But uh, I, I don't play that way, you know. Before I look at Encanto, I have to finish Frozen, watch Tangled, Wreck-It Ralph, See if Luca was a good or bad movie. Frozen 2, and I cannot put off Moana again. Not after that soundtrack. And that's how far I'll go. What can I say except you're welcome. Welcome to the show, everybody. I'm your host, Rob Rodriguez. Now, um, can I ask, what has the news become? I mean, clips resurfaced online of Elmo having a feud with a pet rock and uh, going on rants and tangents and whatnot. And I understand when it's a slow news day. I, I also understand the concept of a bones day and no bones day. But someone took the time to produce a news package on the happenings of what's going on on a show designed for preschoolers. And what's next? This just in. Peppa Pig and Baby Shark are still fighting over the last pudding cup. More on this as the news develops. So I know that everyone out there, some more than others, absolutely cannot stand being told what to do. Especially out in public. Like, you know, you go to the store, and uh, you need to reach something that's high up. And if it's one of those stores that are notorious for never having an associate in the department, you kind of just take liberties onto yourself. You see a ladder and uh, you just climb up the ladder to grab what you need. Or you go all parkour and you start climbing the shelves like a boss. But then you, you hear this voice behind you Get down from there. Customers cannot use the resources in the aisles that could help them easily take care of something. Get an associate to help you. And uh, then he walkies for an associate who I, you can only assume was on lunch or something. Because this is getting too real for people who have experience in retail. What was that guy's name, anyway? Uh, you can only assume it was like Dick or something. But you think that is the stupidest thing you've ever heard. But the reason these like safety guidelines and rules are in place, believe it or not, is because it happened to somebody. And if you're like me and you've been to an orientation or two in your life, you have to hear stories that just sounds so bizarre. Like 30 years ago, a customer climbed a ladder and fell backwards and landed on a guy in a wheelchair. Fortunately, it cushioned the fall, by the way, and the guy in the wheelchair felt none of that. And that is why we can't have nice things, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, just think about it. Decisions that we make can lead to a consequence. And uh, it's funny to think that we could be a future warning sign that we see on the road that we don't quite get, but we never actually look into it either. I mean, we can mess up so many times around a hotel pool that the, the sign with the rules on it probably gets a handwritten update a couple times a year. Yeah, right, right underneath no horseplay in Sharpie it says, no jello mix in the water with five exclamation points. Here's another thing, you know, 
being told not to do something just makes a lot of us want to do it more, you know? Like, take this for example. When I was a kid, one of the biggest primetime shows was Fear Factor with uh, Joe Rogan. But it's okay. This was before we knew what we know now about him and his podcast to, and the horse tranquilizers. But this show had such dangerous stunts that they would say, nothing on the show should be replicated, and I'm paraphrasing here, and tried anywhere. Didn't stop my brother from daring me to eat dirt. But you know, this was before the internet was what it is now. And uh, people my age were just bored all the time. Let's review. So basically, you watch AFV and Ridiculousness. And uh, it's only funny because it didn't happen to you, you know? But you ever wonder how many takes it took to get those falls and shots to the groin just right? I mean, imagine like you're in 7-Eleven with your friend, and then you see the floors wet, so you talk them into filming you, right? And uh, you get a shot of you slipping and falling into a display. You got that at two angles, you know, you got it on your phone, and uh, the security camera caught that. Yeah, you were caught in 4K. Even though it's 7-Eleven, have you seen their security cameras? You, you were barely caught in high definition. And I'm sure we can all agree, it's better to be safe than sorry. Especially when a friend or loved one is mad at you for something. So, uh, you know, you try to talk it through with them, really having a two-sided conversation. Like, come on, it was, it was all in fun. Was it? Yeah, yeah, I mean, like, you know, it was just a joke. You ran over me with a shopping cart. Come on, it's a, it's a TikTok trend. You, you even did the thing, you know, the, you're done. You're done. You are such a clout chaser, you know that? You're right, you're right, I'm sorry. My mother was right about you. End scene. Well, we got a lot of show to fill, so that being said, I'm gonna need a minute. So I interviewed for a job at a movie theater twice, and uh, both times I didn't get it. And I'm pretty sure it was based on the answers I gave them. Like, uh, so what's your favorite movie of all time? Well, Men in Black is a movie that I can watch over and over again and never get tired of. Okay. Who, who would play you in a movie about your life? Well... I get that I look like Jordan Peele a lot. Get out. I have to give credit to movie theater employees for what they have to put up with every day. I mean, they have to clean the theater for the next showing, but the audience is still in there waiting for a post credit scene after West Side Story. I mean, all right, people, show's over. And uh, if you're playing the theater hop, Sing 2 doesn't have one either. I mean, you ever see somebody walk in with a glow-in-the-dark clipboard before the movie starts? Yeah, I'm sure their job is to um, make sure there's no suspicious activity like people who snuck into the movie. That shouldn't be a problem with the assigned seating that they have now, but... How about uh, those uh, fifth graders at the top row um, who snuck into an R-rated film? Okay? Like, my questions are, how did they get in there, and uh, where are their parents? Like, I understand that they probably talked some old lady into buying the tickets for them. But since they got caught red-handed with red vines, or Twizzlers, I don't know, like they probably went to the dollar store before they showed up to the movie. I'm pretty sure now they have to see Clifford the Big Red Dog. It's time for that weekly list known as the Possibility List. It's kind of like going to a get-together that's bring your own everything. Otherwise, it's just no food, drinks, music. Just awkward silence, everybody just standing there around a beanbag. <laughs> Alright, this week's list is titled... Four Ways a Mime Can Be Helpful for Everyday Life. And, uh, I know what you're thinking. Don't... Doesn't everybody hate mimes? 
But yeah, these are just ways they can be essential workers. No hesitating with this one whatsoever. Uh, number four, they can advise you on a new makeup look. Number three, you want them out of your personal bubble, not a problem, they're always in a box. Number two, they're good listeners. And number one, four ways a mime can be helpful for everyday life. They never talk back. All right, and that is the possibility list for you this week. You know, like, a lot of people don't know this because sometimes we're just lazy the week the show's written. Who's we? Uh, sometimes I'm lazy with how the show's written. That uh, A lot of people don't uh, realize that we have reoccurring bits on this show. But we do them so rarely that they're not reoccurring bits, they're more like guest stars at the end of the show. This is events in history that actually happened. So when we hear the name Ashley Simpson, where does our mind go, you know? A lot of us know her as Jessica Simpson's sister. A lot of the female viewers who were born in the 90s remember her as the one they kept behind all the Hillary Duff and JoJo CDs. But men of... But many of us will never forget when she was the musical guest on Saturday Night Live and this happened. Monday, I am waiting. Tuesday, I'm fading. You guys notice how I flubbed my line just then? Yeah. At least I didn't get caught lip syncing. Well, that's the show for you this week. You know how to follow me on social media. You know, that's where you can keep updated on when new episodes are coming out or seeing what projects I have coming up or just to say hi. Well, that's my time and uh, I'll see you next time.